Lord, we bring before the throne of grace. Lord, we bring it to the altar today. He said, bring your altar gift to the altar and leave it. And pick up what you need. And Father, we ask today that the blessings of Almighty God be upon each and every one. We pray that those who are not here today because of the sick and disease. We pray for all our Facebook family and friends that's going through a time on in our life. Some, a lot of them have been sickness in our family. Oh, some is facing operations, some facing all kinds of things. But we serve a God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God who can heal all men of sickness and disease. And we call upon his name right now. Bless us, Almighty God, we call each day and one for us. In Jesus' name we pray. And let all of God's children say, Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Go ahead, that's all. Pray on the time. Go. Oh, 
Ibabalala Kandada Hila Kandini or Sanda. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. What? <coughs> Yeah. 
Jesus. They find something that's more meaningful to them, a more in pleasure, a more enjoyment than being with the power of the Holy Spirit. That is a serious thing to happen to anybody's life. Giving heed to seducing spirits. Now, if you can see it in the uh, government today, Last night I was listening, very seldom I ever listened to years back, and I heard this man talking, and what the government wants to put out there today is called a green deal. Their slogan is going to be to save the world. To save the world. They're talking about it now in California. They want you to go on a system to where they regulate how much electricity you use in your household. They're going to put computers in the meter and they're going to justify, they're going to take a census of how much you use and you don't need. Like that here on the left, for instance, a lot of these houses has got 800 app services in them. Now most of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. I, I think parallel to save my life. But that, 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 that really pulls a lot of current. All right. What the government wants to do, they want to go digital. <coughs> How many of y'all have heard about digital money? Yeah. 
Biden is pushing this now. China has already went into that. And what this means is, if the government gets this like they want, then they can control <laughs> your 401k. Now they want everybody unionized. And what that means is, a contractor will have to be under a union or under a corporation under somebody. Then what the, what the government needs to do is regulate all of it. All right, if the currency goes into play, and I'm going to spend $10,000 on fossil fuel, well, you're not going to do it. It'll have to go through. This all started when your checking account, everything, and your Social Security account was went to the government. That ain't understanding, no. They can check your checking account anytime they want to. They, can, they know how much you have in the bank and this, that, and other. What they want to do is get rid of the dollar bill. Then they'll control the money. They'll control everything about you. Hallelujah. Is this something we can look forward to? We're in a time right now that this will fulfill Revelation chapter 13, 16 through 18. We see it right here on the break. But what they're doing <coughs> by the guide of the spirit of the Antichrist, this spirit is telling them this is what you need to do take total control. All right, anywhere in the world today, now, they want it for you can have a one world currency. In other words, if you travel to China, Russia, Vietnam, whatever, you'll have a card and you, or a mark and you can just use it worldwide. This is how the Antichrist will come in. And what does he say here? That be seducing spirits. The devil is seducing the White House, and they don't even understand it. Why? Because they don't know the Holy Spirit of God. Hallelujah. When people would not stand up and recognize Jesus as Lord and Savior of their life, who are they giving heed to? Who are they listening to? They're listening to the powers of darkness. Glory, hallelujah. Now, this green deal they want to push is they're talking about now in the hospital. This is a bomb. They make that like if the gas they put you to sleep with, if they can cut them in half, then it will save, help save the world. They're going against the animals. They, go, they, they want the farmers to come under their guidance. They don't want a man to be an independent farmer any longer. They want to bring all this under where they have total control. Now, Donald Trump, he wouldn't go along with this. What do you think the United Nothings is? The United Nations are just pushing this with everything they can. Then what will happen? They will have total control of what you've got. They'll have say so of what you've got. They'll tell you whether you can buy fuel or not. They'll tell you what you uh, use electric cars or whatever the case may be. Now, look at the price of food. Did you know a can of spray that go in the bathroom was two ninety eight? Now it's almost eight dollars. Think about that. Every time you go start using it, it's going to triple in price. They call it inflation. Now this is the lead to the Antichrist and his economy. When the Antichrist comes in, he's going to have full control of the, the economies of the world. Then he's going to institute everything he wants to. All they've got to do is start another disease like the COVID. What happened to the church? What happened to people? They have people, a lot of people that sit been ingrained in their mind, they afraid harder to go out of the house without a mask on. <coughs> because the fears have been put into them. But in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, Jesus said, I didn't give you the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. <coughs> Hallelujah. How many of us have had COVID? How many of us have had this off and on? We've had it, but what did it do? A lot of these, a lot of these things, we don't realize really what sometimes what a doctor is giving you. There is no two people alike when it comes to medication. Now, how can one shot take care of everybody? How can one shot take care of every child? This spirit is seducing people, and what it winds up is doctrine of devils. Hallelujah. Now, what do you hear on television? All you hear is some kind of something about woke. 
they can't even define what they put out there. They don't want your children or your grandchildren to have anything to do with Christ. All they do, all they do is promote racism and things of that nature. It is because they understand and realize what did Hitler do? How did Hitler almost rule the world? He went to Hitler won the German. Think about this now. He was raised in Austria. He went to Germany and told them he had a brand new deal that if y'all would follow me, we will rule the world. He went to every educational place in Germany and they bought into his, his deal. And what did he do at the end, about halfway through the world, Second World War? He went totally, completely against Israel to annihilate the Jews because he hated him because he was led by the doctrines of death. Glory, hallelujah. Right now, people don't realize this, but Benjamin Netanyahu said that Iran will not get a nuclear weapon. I'll guarantee you that. We're that close to the rapture of the church. When you think about people today don't even believe or trust in Jesus Christ. Over in 2 Timothy, it says to be a soldier to the cross. How many people today is really a soldier for the cross? Most of them is able. When Paul wrote that, he was looking and saying, look how dedicated the Roman soldier was. He knew if he didn't carry every detail of what he was commanded to do, that he'd be killed. So he translated that over how, how much of a soldier are we for Christ? How much are we for the king, building the kingdom of heaven? Hallelujah. When doctors or devils come in, what takes place? All we hear about is something sad, bad, this, that, and the other. When the, when, the, when the President of the United States tells us there's nothing wrong with the border, they caught enough fentanyl down in Texas and they estimated it would kill one billion people. Really think about that. Eight people in this county on the weekend, as we know of. And you would, would you have ever thought you'd hear such a thing in a little county like Franklin County? But what's going on today, brothers and sisters? What are we seeing? Revelation 21 eight said they would not repent of their sorcery. The word sorcery means from a kind of the Greek, and in the Greek we get that word meaning pharmacy. Now, was a doctor on a, 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 a TV here the other day, and he said one third of the people today is taking something for nerves and anxiety. They have no idea how many people are taking something other than that narcotics, alcohol, all of these things like that. Why? Because they, they can't stand the fear of pressure of life. It's just like that song, Speak the Word, Lord, and I will go. How many people really wake up and hear the voice of Jesus Christ? How many people know what Jesus Christ is speaking to me? How many people really understand what God's plan is for your life? Somebody said, why do you always talk about the Bible? What is anything in the Bible? How can we teach somebody something we know if they will not listen? Hallelujah. When you've got kids in school in the second grade and a 40-year-old can't even understand their math problem, what do we know? Hear me today, brothers and sisters. Then what would happen? Verse 2. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Now, how in the world does somebody, like our former governor, lay a baby on a bed, the umbilical cord is still hooked to the child, and says, if you don't want it, we can make it comfortable. Do these people have a conscience? Do these people have a conscience in selling, these, selling this stuff in real life? Do these people have a conscience bringing it across the border down here? No. Do the people could stop and have a conscience? When the people down there are telling them, you need to stop this, we need to build a wall, no other country in the world. When I went overseas, I took enough shots to last me a lifetime when I went over. I had to take the same coming back. 
I have seen all kind of things in my life. I've seen how people live in Mexico. They beg for everything and get a hold of it. I've seen how they lived in France. It's not much different. I've seen how they lived in Germany. I've seen how they lived in uh, 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 Holland. I've seen how they lived in Rotterdam and Amsterdam. Amsterdam is the same home in the world. Glory, hallelujah. Now, in California, they're talking about having a white light district. We'll just change the name of it, where prostitution will be legal. What kind of country are we living in? But we still God created God loving people, right? Oh Lord. Now, if you look at look into uh, what Jesus sees today, what did God allow you to look through his eyes and see what the thought and intent of mankind is today? Somebody's out there right now fixing to molest a child. In San Diego, they're afraid they're going to have to close the Catholic church down because of men out there raping boys. They can call it love, but God don't call it that. Glory, hallelujah. These old perverts out there after these youngsters like that. Glory, hallelujah. So we see all these things taking place. And, and, and this is the most of the gospel only oh, out there today. It ain't the most of the gospel. When a man tells his congregation, I need a Rolls Royce to ride. <laughs> you know what I tell him to me? Get your horse and buggy. <laughs> Boy, one time told his daddy, he said, uh, Dad, I want a car. Boy said, uh, I need one for my travel. Daddy said, uh, well, I'll tell you what. Get your hair cut and start dressing right. I will uh, think about it. He said, well, Daddy, Jesus had long hair. Now he wore the room. He said, I know that. But Jesus walked everywhere he went to. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What are, we, what are we seeing here today? What are we seeing out there in the world today? Do we see any kind of example of love and compassion, reaching out to help your fellow brothers and sisters? The church don't realize the state they're in right now. Most of the people sitting at home don't realize how serious this thing is. When Jesus looked down, have we done enough to make it? Luke says, am I worthy of being called a child of God? Now when he wrote that, he was wanting his own self. Lord, have I done enough? If I live good enough to be a child, and he was a disciple of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We had better get ourselves on fire for God. Not thinking about it, not talking about it, but doing it. Glory. Hallelujah. Now let's go over to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 12. As I think about the Apostle Paul as he wrote both these books and he sees what's going on. And we really need to get in touch with what he's talking about here. And the last part of the verse says, I am not ashamed while I know in whom I have believed. Mm -hmm. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I committed unto him against that day. My God, that jumped off the page to me. The night I got saved, he's still able to keep me. Yeah. Going on 40 years, where is that commitment at? Where is that conviction at? Where is that people have that? Paul said, I know it, and I am not ashamed to tell the word. And he's able to keep everything that I committed in the hill. I guess that day, glory, hallelujah to the Lamb, Lamb of God. Verse 13, verse 13 hold me fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. I don't know about y'all, but every time I hear that name Jesus, every time I think about that man named Jesus, when I they sung that song, you the one, Lord, that carried my cross to Calvary. You the one, Lord, carried my name to the throne room of God. You the one, Lord, has kept me over these years. 
You're the one, Lord, that's never failed me. You're the one, Lord, I can count on no matter what goes on, no matter how hard it gets, no matter what the, what the world wants to do to me. Glory, hallelujah. That good thing which was committed unto thee by the what? Holy Ghost, which dwelleth in you. Hallelujah. When Saul was crowned king of Israel, God said, he ain't the one I want, but I'm going to give the people what they want. Well, when David came along, jealousy raged. And God took the anointing off of Saul. He took the Spirit of God out of his life. He took it all. He said, take it out and give it to David. Because that's the one I chose. That's the one who's going to follow me all the way through. He's not going to do it rage. He's not going to do it jealous. He's not going to do it envy. He's not going to do it strife. Glory, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Then you go to Psalm chapter 51 when he says, Create me a new heart and take not, take not thy spirit from me. So David realized, I'm almost lost. I've got a kingship. I can have anything I want. But if I don't have the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I don't have nothing. Glory, hallelujah. And you think about anybody that's ever tasted that good gift, that ever felt the spirit of Almighty God, feel the anointing of Almighty God, and turn around and walk away from it, you put him back on the cross. Because you're telling him, you're not sufficient to take care of me. My God, my God, hallelujah. And Isaiah chapter 27, verse 7 says that the anointing is what breaks every yoke, breaks every bondage, breaks every struggle, breaks every thing that the devil tries to hold us down with. Glory, hallelujah, to the precious name of Jesus Christ. Glory, 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 glory. Now we think about all these things that's going on in the world today. How many people are really promoting the gospel? How many people is sold out to the Lord? How many people is, is, not, is, is not afraid to stand and say, Jesus is the Lord of my life to the glory of God the Father? Hallelujah. Until we really get what we need in our life, what are we going to wind up being? These false God doctrines and all this evil wickedness coming up around us, we see it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now go to Revelation chapter 16 and verse 14 and 15. This is soon going to take place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For they are spirits of devil working what? Yeah. Miracles. <laughs> the devil is going to put things out there and people are going to buy into it. How many people they are buying into that? Which go forth unto who? Kings of the earth. Look at these world leaders. Now, look at 28,000 people been found in that uh, earthquake over in Turkey and Syria. How many countries outside of the United States has even offered to help those people? What kind of religion do that people have? They have worked at home, Allah, 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 Allah. Allah. Think about that. What is the kings of the earth being led by right now? Who's going to be the ultimate king? The Antichrist. Can you see it? It's close. It's close. And a lot of people don't realize the rapture of the church is going to take place seven years, seven years before Christ comes back. Then the seven years of tribulation. In Genesis, when Pharaoh said, I'm having a terrible dream. Who could tell him what was coming? His soothsayers, his magicians, his wise men, they could tell him nothing. What does seven fat cows and seven lean cows be? He couldn't sleep. He couldn't get no peace. He couldn't get nothing. Then a little boy in jail, who the sad family sold out. His name was Joseph. He said, I can tell you what that means. If you can do that, I'll make you second in command of the big boy. He said, you're going to have seven years of penalty. 
the fat cow. Then the lean cow, there'll be seven years of famine. Seven years of famine. Hallelujah. It played out just exactly like he said. And he said, whatever this boy said to do, where was David's, I mean, Joseph's family at? They was on the outside looking weak. They had to come to him for food. Glory, hallelujah. When the tribulation starts, who are you going to turn to? Where are you going to find food? Most of the backsliders don't have a train of thought like this right here. A man asked me this week, he said, if I'm going through the tribulation, would it be after I kill somebody? to protect my food in the house. I said, you a church going to make? Oh, yeah. I don't think you believe in the rapture. I'm not planning on having to worry about what's in that freezer. I'm not planning on worrying about what we're going to be eating down here. I'm planning on sitting at the welcome table. Glory, hallelujah. He love us all for shun that he come to this. All right. And the whole world to gather them to the battle of a great day of God Almighty. All this is heading toward what? The battle of Armageddon. Now, behold, I come as a thief. This is Jesus speaking. Blessed is he that what? Watches. What's he talking about? The hour of time we're living in. What you see in. It looks as, as it was in the day of what? Noah. So shall it be before what? The coming of the Son of Man. But Jesus, the rapture will take seven place before that prophecy will be fulfilled. Hallelujah. So what does he say do here? Lest, uh, and what? And keep what? His garment. What does garment there mean? <clears throat> You've got to have a robe and a crown to walk into the streets of glory. If you make it to heaven, you may not get the one crown, but you'll get the one James talked about. The crown of life. Everybody walks through that gate of prayer is going to have the crown of life. Glory, hallelujah. All right? Lest I walk naked and they see his shame. That means the person's not going to be clothed. Or they lost their clothes. Hallelujah. How much clear can John make it here? And John wondered himself. The disciples wondered themselves. That's why in Matthew chapter 24 and verses 1 and 2, they went to the Lord and said, What will be the sign of your coming? And Jesus said that the wicked and adulterous generation was the sign. Look at what, look how people are living today. In Hollywood, adultery don't mean no more than just, don't mean nothing at all. Don't mean nothing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Then what's going to happen? And he gathered them together in one place called in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. Everybody's wondering what these things is coming in we shooting down. It's obvious. They know it, they won't tell you. They trying to create create something that can come in on our radar range, not detected. Yeah, I know what I'm talking about. When I was in the army, I was in our defense missiles. And the only way we could lock in on something was with the radar. And when the radar locks in on the target, you've got an AM 38-1 army device. It was about the size of a pack of cigarettes. It's like two little batteries. You lift up the door and lift it in there. You raise that monitor, put it in red. As soon as you locked on this target, it went. If they can bring something in that can't lock on a target, what do I think they would bring in? What would, what would be something if they brought in and we shot it down and it was full of chemical warfare? See, a lot of people didn't realize that's one reason they didn't want to shoot that thing down. But that thing in Alaska, they shot it down. And in Canada, they shot it down. The Canadians didn't shoot it down. We did. 
and they want to see something about our technology. And the reason that is, think about what Putin's doing. What does Putin really want? He's not worried about Ukraine. Putin wants to take Israel. Because in Isaiah, I mean, Ezekiel 38 1, he says, two ball and rush will come against Israel. What if he had all the planes and missiles and stuff to fight with that's in Israel? If they go in and drop a few bombs and missiles in Israel, half of that countryside is going to blow up. Everything Israel has got is underground. If you go down to White Sand, New Mexico, and Arizona, people say that desert's no good for nothing else. It's no good for anything. I bet you if a nuclear war starts, you see you see them holes up and up and down like nothing to the mankind. But that's what they've got in mind. Why? Because some teach that America is not going to be in the tribulation period. What country will, will be the hardest for the Antichrist to overcome? Most of the world, he's got it. How does he have it? Through false doctrine. Hindu, Allah, Confucius, uh, Allah, Allah, and all that bunch over there. You, you got billions of people. What would be one nation that would be the hardest nation for him to take? It would be America. Why? Because we steal the Bible, people of the world, and it's getting weaker and weaker. And so many people are going to buy into what the Antichrist is going to say. Hallelujah. So where are we at today in the prophecy? John sees it here. And he's telling them, especially in verse 15, have keep your garment clean, spotless. Who is Jesus coming to? <coughs> Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 says, I'm coming for a church, a glorious church, without spot, without blemish, without wrinkle. Yeah, that white uh, shawl, uh, coat shawl got on. If you put a piece of a uh, dollar red, a blue, a uh, black, it'll be a spot on it. If my garment has one spot on it, Jesus is going to say, why this, why this spot there? Did you walk away from me? Did you fall back into that old sin nature? What did you do? I told you to be watched, to watch, and not be naked. What is he talking about being clothed there? That's clothed in righteousness. All right, in Psalm 23, Jesus said what? Hallelujah. He leadeth me in what? The path of righteousness for what? His name. Sake. Yeah, you know I walk through the back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word is the church at today. He's not coming for us, a satisfied church. He's coming for a glorious church without spot, without blemish, and without wrinkle, and will stand up in his work and proclaim him as Lord and Savior. Glory, hallelujah. So what do we need today? What does the church world need? What is going to happen? I hear a lot of people talking about it's going to be a great revival. I don't see that happening until until the tribulation starts. Because in the seventh chapter of the book of Revelation, the elders looked and said, Who were these? Who was this multitude? The Lord said, These are they that washed their robe in the blood of the Lamb and come out of the tribulation. What does that mean? That means when the Antichrist shows up to your house or his goons, if we don't make it. If I don't make it in the rapture of the church, the rapture takes place when I believe. I know what I've got to do. I've got to prepare myself to die. To do what Christ has already done for me. To be willing to die for the cause of Jesus Christ. To know Him and to walk away from Him. Put Him down. <coughs> Hallelujah. Anybody been to the military, what does that mean? Absent. Without freedom. Amen. Believe us up to come a soldier to Christ. 
Jesus Christ is not the man in chief. It's not the president. It's not the general you see around right here. He is our commander in chief. He is our general. He is our sergeant. He's even the PFC, the private first place. As long as we call it him. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I hope, you, I hope people out there today hear this message. Share this message. Don't you put your faith in no man. Don't you pin your faith in no man's country. Because Luke 9, 16 says, when we put our hands to the plow, that means to follow Christ. If we look back, we're not fit for the kingdom of heaven. When he told them to come out of Sodom, he said, if you look back, don't look back. Hallelujah. We're to look forward. Colossians chapter 3 says, The same your thoughts for the things just above, because everything they need is temporary. Our life we know it is temporary, but our life with Jesus is eternal. With every head bowed, every eye closed, everybody out there watching me this morning, you may think, well, that won't happen in my lifetime. They didn't think that the rain was God in Noah's day. But it did. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The devil will kick you farther you want to go. So many people think, what part of the old field is going to do to me? What can it do to me?
She's a living example of what God can do. And there's somebody out there today that needs to be set free from anything, any kind of addiction. They can find that grace. They can find that love. They can find that forgiveness. They can find that mercy. And they can find it in only one place in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray for everybody out there this morning that's got COVID. Any kind of sickness and disease is keeping them away from God. Lord, it would be broken today. The bondage would be broken. We come against the piles of darkness. We come against sickness. We come against disease. We come against dependency on whatever the case may be. Let it be, be, let it be replaced today, Lord Jesus, with the fire and the power of your mighty Holy Spirit. For it's in your gracious name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody else want to be prayed for for anything? I want to thank you for the things that I've been through in the last two months that no one is even believed the same in total. So, but I know that God has been me through the whole situation and I've been through a lot. Believe me, I have. And I want to thank God for making me as strong as he has and helping me to do this because everybody says, well, how can you have a smile on your face? I said, when you got God in your heart, you can have a smile all the time. No matter how you do you're good. And it just makes you stronger. And I want to thank you for making me strong from what I've been through. And I still got to go a little bit, but that's okay. God's awful with me. So thank you, Lord, and thank you for everything that you've done for me in my, my life, at least in the last two months. Amen. All right, John. Thank you, Mr. Sister. Yeah, Father, Lord, thank you for the service you've had this morning, Lord. Just bless those that are sick and not having to be here, Lord, and want to just bless the last few months, Lord. We just ask you, Lord, to get a uh, stirring back in our spirit, Lord, to get them back in the church where they need to be in the Father. We just ask it in your name. In the name above all names. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God bless everybody out there. Get that off before I tie that on. I don't want to hurt this tie. You don't want to hurt the tie. I mean, yeah, the tie. That's what I'm talking about. 